So it's great to be here today to talk to you about DAWA's new temperature monitoring solution. So as Rebecca stated, the objectives today on the webinar is to really identify how thermal is helping businesses reopen from the pandemic. I'll also go in and explain some best practices for using our thermal technology. I'll talk about some of our most interesting vertical use cases, and then I'll summarize the key components that you would need to get your business up and running. And then finally, we'll take a sneak peek at our new temperature thermal station that we will be introducing within the, the next couple of weeks. So without further ado, let's get started. So as you all know, in the early months of this year, the COVID-19 pandemic hit the United States, causing non-essential businesses to close. So now, as part of the country starts to relax these strict measures, businesses are trying to figure out how they're going to adapt as they prepare to reopen. Now, since fevers are one potential symptom of the virus, one solution that many are implementing is to require temperature checks at entrances for anyone that's coming and going. Now, manual thermometers are very time consuming. They're also invasive and can be very unsanitary. So as a result, DAWA has introduced a thermal temperature monitoring solution as an automated way to conduct continuous non-invasive measurement without any type of personal contact. Now, Dallas thermal screening devices are really designed to measure the heat on a person's skin and can be used to estimate whether a person has a fever. So compared to a handheld thermometer, now this can't, Typically, handheld thermometers really only work on one person at a time, and it takes a minimum of around three seconds to measure a person's temperature. So there's a lot more risk for contamination, and you increase your personnel. So, for example, let's say that you had 5,000 people coming through an area. It would take around 4.2 hours to get them all through using a handheld device. So with DAWA's solution, uh, efficiency is increased because we are able to simultaneously measure multiple people per second for a constant flow of traffic. So it's going to increase your efficiency. And it can also detect temperatures at a longer distance and at a higher accuracy of plus or minus 0.54 degrees Fahrenheit. And then if somebody Alert, is alerted as having a high temperature and an instant alert is immediately sent to the operator. So if a fever is detected, as I mentioned, the person's face will be recorded and then it's sent so personnel can use a secondary method as a clinical, such as a clinical grade thermometer to confirm the person's temperature. Now, it's also very important to understand that human bodies register different temperatures just depending on the method that's being used. So, for example, we take for granted 98.6 Fahrenheit is a normal temperature, but that's really the average when using a calibrated oral thermometer. Now, if you use a rectal or ear method, you'll notice that the temperature is going to be anywhere between 0.5 to 1 degrees higher than an oral temperature. And if you would use the armpit or the forehead method, the temperature is going to be about 5 to 1 degree Fahrenheit lower than a oral temperature. So it's also very important to make sure that the secondary thermometer has a very high accuracy reading, preferably lower than 0.54 degrees Fahrenheit. Otherwise, you may be get conflicting, re conflicting readings where you could potentially allow somebody to pass through who has a fever. So these are just some things to keep in mind when you confirm a person's high temperature alert using one of your secondary methods. Now, probably the most 
accurate way of measuring a person's internal body temperature using a thermal camera is by measuring the inner canthus, which is part of the eye that includes your tear duct. Now, although Dallas Solution is capable of measuring multiple people, multiple people at a time, if you want the most accurate reading, it's best for people to walk through a stanchion in a single file line and to remove any type of headgear or eye accessories, move hair away from the face so that the camera is able to read from the eye area. That's where you're going to get your best, most accurate temperature reading. So again, just depending on the configuration of the DAWA solution, the system can measure this part of the eye as long as you follow the, the setup in instructions. So just making sure that your eyes are not obscured by any type of glasses or anything like that. So here's a, a good example, actually, of some images where the person's eyes are not exposed. And so the thermal device is not going to be able to accurately show the internal body temperature from your inner canthus. So the first four pictures at the top, you can see the guy's wearing a hat. He has glasses. Um, image number two, he has a hat on. So that brim is going to obscure getting that, that internal body reading. And that's going to be where your most accurate temperature, body temperature, is going to be at. And the third image, you can see that the camera's not picking up on that hot cup of coffee that he's holding. However, again, that temperature may be off slightly just because his glasses are on and he has a hat on. And in the fourth image, the guy's wearing a helmet and sunglasses. So you're not going to get the most accurate reading if you are, are covering that your, your eye area. So thermal technology is not anything new. And in fact, it was used during the outbreak of SARS several years ago as a way to detect fevers. And because fevers are often associated with illness and the fact that outbreaks have been occurring every couple of years, having a temperature monitoring solution in place is really a great proactive approach for the future. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the best applications of where a DAWA thermal temperature solution can be used. Now, although this solution is not going to be suitable for every application out there, some examples of ones that will benefit are, first of all, it has to be an indoor application. A uh, very busy, a, a very large application will, will benefit where the temperature, the ambient temperatures may vary. So anywhere like an airport, jails, terminals, medical centers, and even manufacturing centers and, and warehouses are some of the ideal applications that will benefit from this solution. Now, for example, many hospitals started implementing manual fever checks initially at entrances. However, by doing this, again, it puts staff at unnecessary risk of exposure, and it also increases the manpower of having somebody at the entrance to, to continuously have to take the temperature. So with administrators and staff already overwhelmed with the high patient intake, they deployed an automated thermal temperature monitoring solution for a safer environment. So here's just a couple of examples. Uh, one hospital in Spain that's using the technology, um, the Czech Republic, also an example up there on your, your right, upper right. And then there's at the bottom right is a screen capture of the Health Simon Cancer Center in Indianapolis that's using our solution. So here's an example of different resolution options that you can utilize, uh, HD or very low resolution. Now, DAWA's hybrid temperature monitoring camera uh, shows both a visible camera 
and it has the ability to also show the thermal side of the camera. So the visible camera is a two megapixel and it has an eight millimeter lens. And then on the right hand side, the, the thermal image that you see there, that's using a 13 millimeter lens. So those that have privacy concerns, thermal technology has made it possible to use video surveillance without violating patient privacy or HIPAA rev regulations, just as long as it is not capturing any identifiable information, such as the person's name, uh, their address, any type of social security information, their phone number, anything like that. Now, additionally, because of the pandemic, on March 17th of this year, the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission issued an update to its guidance indicating that employers now may implement temperature screening measures in response to COVID-19. So those that do have privacy concerns, the solution does allow for privacy masking so that just the temperature is visible. So if you notice here on option one, the person um, on the thermal lens is not visible. So they're completely blacked out there. Uh, however, on the visible lens, you, you do see that person. So, um, you, but you can't see the, the person on the, the thermal side. And in option two, uh, you can see the person there, but the black um, background is completely masked out. And then as option three, this one is showing that both the, the, the person as well as the background is completely blacked out. So just depending on your requirement, there are three different options for privacy concerns. Now, another application that's using our thermal solution is warehouses. So there's many warehousing and logistics centers with employees who are continuing to work through the pandemic and our stay at home initiatives. So the temperature monitoring solution is able to provide a very time efficient way to assess potential high temperatures of large groups without any type of personal contact. So this type of solution is really ideal for, de for deploying at employee entrances, and that helps to mitigate any type of risk of a potential sick worker from entering the building. So the solution can also be deployed throughout the facility as well in the event that maybe somebody develops a fever during the day. So maybe some type of area where is a common area that people are continuously um, going through might be another option. So according to CNET.com, Amazon is actually using the technology as a preventative measure to support the health and safety of their employees. So the use of the thermal cameras has allowed this essential business to stay up and running um, as compared to having to shut its warehouse down. So this next slide, I'm going to talk about some best practices when setting up the thermal monitoring solution. So first of all, we have the, the hybrid camera. And again, as I mentioned, it has a 13 millimeter visible, um, the, the, I'm sorry, the thermal portion has a 13 millimeter lens, and then the visible lens is eight millimeter. And the setup height for this is 6.5 to 9.8 feet. So anywhere within that range is a good height to deploy the, the camera. And that's whether you're using the tripod or using a permanent mounting solution. Now the black body device, which is essential for getting an accurate temperature measurement, 
should be set up between 5.9 to 8.2 feet high. And if you choose to set up anywhere in between the recommended ranges, you just want to make sure that the camera is 0.65 to 1.6 feet higher than the black body. And then finally, the distance between the black body and the camera should be 9.8 feet. So by adhering to Dallas recommended setup, you're going to get the most optimal accuracy for measuring temperature possible. Now, planning the layout of the system prior to deploying it is extremely important. And so, for example, it's best to avoid deploying it in any type of direct sunlight, at entrances, any type of reflective surfaces, any place that has very high ambient temperature, or in areas that have a strong airflow, such as air conditioning vents. Now, another important tip is to use a stanchion. And the reason for this is basically because the warmth of a person's skin can be very different versus their core body heat. So people that have a higher or a heavier build or health conditions or hot flashes or just walking in from a, a, a hot car um, is going to trigger the, the system's alarm. So you want to make sure that they have an opportunity to cool down their bodies. So it's best to delay visitors before they reach the thermal temperature measuring area. And then this, as I said, this is a, a good um, opportunity for their bodies to uh, regulate in temperature. And additionally, you will also get a higher accuracy when the person is standing still and facing the camera versus walking in motion or they're, they're turned to the side. So a stanchion is really going to help mitigate any type of inaccuracies and it's going to help to achieve your optimal results. So this is an example of a cosmetic manufacturer who deployed the solution to monitor its employees when they enter the building. Now one issue that they did run into was that skin temperature was reading a bit high when people would be entering their location because of the desert heat. So the way that they were able to solve this was by installing stanchions to give their bodies a chance to cool down. And from their feedback, they're indicating that it was taking anywhere between one to five minutes for the bodies to cool down. So here again, we have an image of this large makeup retailer, and this picture is just showing the entrance that the employees come into that they're required to pass through the detection zone prior to punching in. And here is just a quick video. So that was just a, a quick uh, video of the, the makeup retailer just showing uh, how the employees are required to, to walk through the, the stanchion before going into the warehouse. So another application that is using this solution is any type of a retail or grocery store. They will also benefit from the solution. So it not only helps to alert if staff if, to alert staff if customers have an elevated temperature before entering the store, but it's also great for keeping employees or any type of a third party delivery guys from coming into the store if they have an elevated temperature.
Now for a seamless integration, this next slide just shows an overview of how our solution can easily be implemented into a system that's already in place and um, work well for this type of a retail environment. So, you know, the this particular retail image is just showing, you know, they have the, the dual lens cameras for monitoring the aisles. You have your cameras for your cash register, any type of a fisheye, maybe for your break room, a multi-sensor for your parking lot area, and then now adding on your thermal solution for entering your store. Uh, they can all be very easily integrated um, very quickly. Okay, so let's now talk about some of the key components that are required in order to get this type of a solution up and going. So before we go any further, I just want to cover a couple of disclaimers about the solution. Now, Dallas Thermal Temperature Monitoring Solution is not FDA cleared or approved, and it's not to be used to diagnose or identify people that have COVID-19 or any other type of disease. And these devices are designed more of a screening tool to detect elevated body temperature, but then fever should always be confirmed with a secondary method, such as a clinical grade thermometer, which I had already mentioned earlier. So again, thermal imaging is a very efficient way to monitor temperature within large groups of people. And because it can be done at a distance, it's contact free and has a very fast detection speed for getting people through uh, a stanchion, for example, uh, very quickly. And in addition, it's able to save manpower. Another benefit is that it allows for a seamless flow of people and has a very high accuracy of plus or minus 0.54 degrees Fahrenheit when using it with a black body, which is what we recommend. Additionally, another benefit is that our components are EPOE technology. So they're ideal if you do have coax or uh, you have IP, it doesn't really matter because our EPOE technology is able to convert coax to pure IP. And it also is good for long distance range type transmission. Additionally, you can remote view and configure using Dawa's free DMSS app. So you can get alerts on your mobile device. Another great thing about this solution is that it's able to capture the person's face. So automatically with the facial detection of the NVR that we recommend. And it also automatically does temperature monitoring without personal contact. So long distance wise, you're able to do rapid screening up to, we would say no more than 23 feet. And also the face detection allows to monitor multiple people um, and to do any type of triggering if uh, they exceed uh, the detected range of uh, possible fever. Okay, so the, the one component the, that we recommend, the first one that I'll go over is the EPOE NBR, and it is a 16 channel, one U, 16 POE, it's a network recorder, so what this does is that it has four channels to do face detection, and it is a 4K resolution, and it features the dual smart H.265 and H.264 Kodak, and has two SATA ports and ships with a four terabyte drive. So this is the recorder that we definitely recommend using with our black body and our camera. And ideally this is um, will temperature, temperature compatibility with select thermal cameras. This is the reason why we're recommending this particular recorder. So the next component that you would need to get your solution up and going is this hybrid camera. 
So the hybrid technology, again, it combines thermal and the visible light sensors into an integrated package so that you can see not only the thermal, but also the, the visible light so you don't have to have two separate cameras. Now the thermal sensor provides temperature monitoring and the visible light sensor, uh, light sensor uh, will provide your visual identification. So both streams are gonna be fed into the NVR for synchronized recording and playback. And the NVR is based on facial detection. So it's gonna provide a positive ID of the known individual uh, against a user face facial database. And so that's gonna basically provide a more granular record of individuals with temperature monitoring. So this camera also has a couple of different ways to mount. So you can mount this camera on a tripod and that would be if maybe you just don't have the, the space to, to mount. Uh, maybe you want to use it because you want to deploy it in different locations throughout the day. So it's just easier to, to move the tripods around. So you can do with either a tripod. We also have a wall or a ceiling mount. And then we also have a longer ceiling mount. So those mount, mounting devices are coming soon. We haven't launched them quite yet. They, sh they should be in our portfolio within the next couple of weeks. Okay, so the black body device. So this is what is really gonna provide your constant reference temperature um, and it needs to be in view of the thermal camera. So this is going to assure you have an accurate temperature monitoring that, um, that's gonna be continuous throughout your operation. So many of the competing systems out there that don't have a reference module will be less expensive. However, they're not gonna have the high accuracy and they will possibly require recalibration of the ambient, if the ambient temperature changes. So uh, the time that it takes to recalibrate the, the device will, you know, create some downtime in getting people through your, your, your solution. Also, if you deploy the system in a location um, where there's ACs that are turning on and off, a gust of wind from the entrance, these could very easily skew the readings requiring recalibration. So this black body device is, is pretty important. Um, a couple tips in installing the black body. You want to make sure that proper focus on the black body is going to be essential to getting the accurate measurements. So in order for it to be effective, it must be mounted on the same plane as the person that's being screened. And a black body that's significant closer or further from the person being screened will be out of focus and then the function um, will not be as accurate. In, in comparison to its reference source. Now, additionally, when you're setting up the device, you'll need to also draw a rectangular box around the highlighted edge of the black body. So, um, the little green just popped up on my screen here, over here on the, the left-hand side, it's kind of hard to see, but right there, you wanna make sure that that you draw your box directly around here. The bounding box needs to be touching all four yellow sides of the black body. And you can't draw outside of that. If you draw outside of that, like here, that's gonna be wrong. Um, and you're not gonna be getting as high of a, a temperature reading. Your temperature, uh, your accuracy is really gonna be off there. So you really have to, to make sure that you follow the instructions um, that the, the manufacturer specifies, otherwise you're not gonna get as good of a temperature reading. So that's pretty important. And again, uh, just to go back. Um, we do have um, the, different the, the different mounting devices as well for the black body. So again, if you want to put it on that tripod so that you can move your system around, um, it's very easy to do that. Or we have this new ceiling mount that, that's longer. And we also have the, the wall or shorter ceiling mounts uh, as well. 
coming into the line. Uh, the other important thing I, I do want to mention down here is there's, there's a note here. The black body can only be used with one camera. So we don't recommend spreading it across throughout multiple thermal cameras. It's, uh, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, so this next slide um, is just previewing what Damon is going to be talking about in just a few minutes, the, the temperature monitoring terminal as compared to the, the full temperature solution here that, that I just spoke of. So really the difference between the two is the, the accuracy. You're gonna get a little higher of an accuracy um, but this is meant more for your larger facilities and, you know, type of applications where they're going through a stanchion and you have a, a high flow uh, of people that are, that are continuously coming through constant flow. And um, so this is your more advanced uh, type of application. And the, the one that Damon's going to talk about is, is going to be for your smaller or mid-size applications. Uh, where it does require just doing one person at a, at a time, but the, the cost of it is going to be uh, much less. So here is the, the full solution components. I'll highlight it here. So again, temperature monitoring black body right here. You're going to need that for ensuring the high accuracy readings as well as your hybrid camera and then combine that with your NVR storage, four terabyte, 16 channel, 4K resolution, uh, right here, your NVR 5216. Now, additionally, you uh, may want to deploy a screen. And so we have our 43 inch monitor here, and then our EPOE switch, if you need that, that's a LR21108 ADT. And then down here are your different mounting solutions. So if you're going to get the tripod, if you're going to go that route, you're going to need two of those tripods as well as two of these mounting plates. The mounting plate goes right on top so that you can mount the black body for the camera there. Otherwise, um, here are your wall mount and ceiling mount options. So this solution retails MSRP not including the, the power supply, the switch or display, around 22,000. Okay, so, um, and then additionally, just one thing I wanna point out before I go f any further on that, is that the, the thermal temperature camera, this, here we go, right here, this does have a three-year warranty, and then your black body right here, this is going to have a one-year warranty. And then the, the rest of the devices are, are standard uh, within the, the dowel warranty. So now, as, as I said, the retail price around 22000 So now, the, although this solution appears to have a very hefty price tag at your first glance, it's actually going to pay for itself within the first year if you compare it to executing manual temperature readings so that businesses are able to get back up and running. So in this scenario uh, that I can find a show, um, let's just say that we are accounting for around 5,000 people that go through uh, in, a, in a day's time. Um, could be more, could be less, but we'll just say around 5,000 dollars. 5,000 people a day. Now, using the manual thermometer method, which here is what we're looking at, um, after you account for purchasing, you know, several hand thermometers that they have to be very high in accuracy, so they're, they're not going to be cheap monitors, uh, thermometers, as well as your hand sanitizer, your sanitary wipes that you may have to wipe your thermometers down, uh, gloves, any other type of PPE gear um, for the person that's taking the temperatures, as well as for the labor of somebody to stand there and manually take and record people's temperatures. 
On the low side, when you account for, you know, let's say you're paying the person $15 an hour, um, that's um, prorate, you know, maybe it's a dollar a day prorated for your thermometer, $2 a day for all that PPE equipment. Um, overall, total per year, if you're doing this, um, you know, every single day for, for an entire year, around $28,000. Whereas 22,000 for that one-time investment, um, you know, you're gonna end up paying for this solution in a year's time. And like I said, this is gonna, you're gonna wanna use this solution. It's a proactive approach um, for the future. So in summary, um, the thermal monitoring solution is, is great technology. It's playing a crucial role in monitoring temperatures so businesses can get back up and running. It's accurate, efficient, and it's very fast screening, monitors subjects from just faster, higher efficiency. You're getting a visual alert if temperatures are over detected. And then you have that EPOE solution so that you can deploy it over coax or just go for longer transmission distance without having repeaters built in there. So um, overall, this is a, a really great solution if you're looking to, to try and get your, your business back up and running. So I'm now going to turn it over to Damon, and he is going to talk to you guys and give you a little sneak peek at our new lower-end solution, our low-cost solution that we're going to be coming out with. So let me just change this over. Uh, you should be able to see it now on your side, Damon. Yes. Um, do you see my screen? Yes, I do. You're good to right, go. Thanks, Jennifer. All right, so as Jennifer mentioned, we're introducing a low-cost um, solution for temperature monitoring. This is our new um, new temperature monitoring station. Um, it is coming soon. Um, we're expected to have stock in the beginning of June. So it'll be ready by by the by beginning of June timeframe. So um, just to give you some key features right now, it is a seven inch touchscreen. So you do all your um, your settings on the touchscreen um, monitor itself. It is for indoor use. So again, we do not want these to be placed outdoor where it can be affected by ambient temperature. Uh, so we do recommend an area um, within the um, recommended um, ambient temperature range as shown here. Um, the accuracy uh, rate is plus or minus um, 0 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit. So as compared to the higher end solution, it is um, less accurate because there is no black body box to um, calibrate the um, the unit itself. It is still accurate, but not just not as accurate as our um, high end solution. Temperature monitoring, di monitoring distance is roughly one one to six feet, so the person will have to stand through the um, stand. Um, facing the kiosk to get scanned. And it does have an elevated temperature uh, alarm or a sound signal when it, if it detects this. And it has the FCC and CE certification. Now with the standalone model, which we can use for a wall mount, it, there are two optional accessories that will be available uh, so separately. So the first one is the desktop mount. So if you're at a hotel or you have a lobby area, you just need a desktop mount, you can place this with this um, standalone unit. And if you don't need a desktop mount and you just need like um, a, a floor mount as shown here, uh, this is roughly 4.8 feet tall, the, the mount. So you just pop the um, unit inside the mount and you can place it in your um, the area that you wish to be that you wish to have this um, temperature monitoring solution station. Okay, now here is the quick um, kind of a cartoon of how it works. So the person will go through the entrance guidance area, then the temperature monitoring area will do the scan. So I'll play right now. If it detects the elevated temperature, it'll send a notification. And then, you know, what the customer could use to a further secondary area for further testing. 
Okay, now some of the key features, um, it is contactless, it is um, pretty accurate, and it does give you a temperature alert. Now software management side and access control side is still uh, in the works. They'll be coming probably be coming after the initial launch, so it'll not be included at, within the first launch. Um, it does have a mask checking function. So if you want to enable this, what this does is if it detects anybody going through the kiosk without a, a face mask, it'll alert the person to put on a face mask. So again, as I mentioned, it is contactless you know, compared to a physical person standing there um, measuring your temperature with a, a thermometer, thermometer gun. Um, so you're, you're at risk for cross-infection that way. Um, with this uh, method, it is you're avoiding the need for close contact because you can stand one feet to six feet away. Um, the closer you are to it, the more accurate it is. Uh, as I mentioned, it is uh, high accuracy. Um, <clears throat> so it is, it does have an algorithm that compensates and adjusts um, the temperature. So it's, the range is plus and minus uh, 0 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit. As I mentioned, if the, if the terminal detects a the station detects a, a elevated temperature, there will be a voice prompt to notify um, the person. As I mentioned, the mask detection. So an example here is if the person is wearing a mask and this option is enabled, then you're you're free. You're passed. They'll send a message to pass, and it can let you go. And if you're not wearing a mask, it'll signal you to wear a mask. Now applications, we can use these in <clears throat> many vertical um, deployments, such as you know, hospitals, airports, uh, restaurants, lobby areas, um, even banking, you know, small office buildings. Um, there really is an endless opportunity here with this um, new station. It is small, portable, um, easy to set up. You know, um, some of the competitors out there are launching um, similar devices. Um, so the main difference is here is the, the, the technology being used. So thermal imaging is being used in Dahua's uh, thermal station, while compared to the other competitors, they're using uh, thermal power technology. So the main difference is, is the <clears throat> is, um, the, the thermal, Dahua Im thermal imaging is uh, once calibrated, factory once calibrated temperature, it supports a temperature <clears throat> compensation algorithm, and there is a higher um, resolution, uh, 120 by 80 resolution compared to thermal pile um, technologies, which is which doesn't support a therm temperature compensation and has a lower resolution. And it is with the thermal imaging, it is much more, more efficient. Um, it is there is a range. Um, greater range of measurements. So with thermal power technology, you have to be within uh, 5 me 0.5 meters, which is like 3 to 5 centimeters, which is really close. <clears throat> um, yeah, so here, let me tell you the difference between the main, the main differences between thermal imaging and thermal pile technology. Uh, as I mentioned, thermal imaging technology measures uh, distance further, so we have a greater range. So with thermal pile, like I said, it's it's around three to five inches of accuracy, similar as like a temperature gun. So the risk with this is with thermal pile, you get, the closer you get, you know, with three to five inch range, you're probably you, it's possibly to spread the, the the germs or virus onto the station itself. So that's why we recommend it um, with our thermal imaging solution. It is um, much further range for detection. Um, the thermal imaging technology also offers a wider range of um, temperature measurement angle. Um, for thermal imaging, the, the image angle is generally 50 degrees um, horizontal and versus a the thermal pile, which is generally less than 30 degrees. So your, 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 angle, your angle of measurement is greater with thermal imaging technology. And it, with thermal imaging technology, it measures temperature much faster compared to uh, thermal power technology. 
Now, thermal um, imaging technology accurately locates the forehead temperature, and it can't be affected by high temperature objects on hand, such as you know if you're holding a cup cup of coffee or anything hot, it will not um, put that into the equation. Uh, thermal pile technology uses a higher uh, point temperature, which is successful to false alarms you know caused by these um, hot um, liquids or products you're holding. So soon on our website, we'll have data sheets and flyers available. As I mentioned, this is a coming soon product. Uh, what's in the box content is the, the, the station, the, the thermal temperature sensor. We have uh, cable connectors and um, you know, power cables. And included is a wall mount is, is if you need to use that. So the wall mount is included with the, with the station but the desktop mount and the floor mount are sold separately as accessories. And here is the pricing for the um, station itself. So as you can see for the station, standalone station, MSRP is $3,399.99. Now the floor stand, which is the galvanized steel, it's, it's a very heavy stand. So the MSRP for that is $399.99. And the desktop stand, you know, for kiosk uses, is, is MSRP is one seventy nine ninety nine. So again, these are coming soon. We, we will begin to launch um, these products in the beginning of June. Others uh, are shipping at that time. 